So what do you think about this one? Have I seen this one before? Well, it's here now. But it's running. Ooh. It's funny, there's no like other car that you get in, you start it up, you just bought it, has some lifter tick or whatever that is, and you go to yourself, oh, that's fine. Let's just ignore it. Howdy, welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel. My name is Troy and uh, today's new Rover Day. So what did I do? Well, I wasn't planning on buying another Land Rover this, uh, this year, but I started thinking to myself, I don't have a winter project. I've, I've done most of the work to the other ones that I've tried to accomplish, so I, I need more, I need more hurt. And so instead of doing the right thing, which has been like finding one local, uh, you know, taking it for a test drive, seeing how things look, making sure there's no rust, what I really wanted to do was roll the dice on a cheap Land Rover that was six or 700 miles away with no description, no running video, no information, and just three lousy pictures that have been sitting at an auto auction for many, many months. Um, so that's the option I went So with. I clicked a button and a Rover showed up at my house. And I wasn't even there for it. My neighbor was happy, was able to receive it from the truck, which is awesome. So I have just returned from a trip um, to the upper Pennsylvania, New York area. And when I was gone, the Rover was delivered and he picked it up. So I haven't gotten any feedback on it. It's just, it's just, it's sitting, sitting right there. So we're gonna, we're gonna go check it out. So here it is. And what a sight to return from a trip and just see that just sit in front of your house. Looks good, right? You can see why I rolled the dice on this one, so to say. I didn't really, it wasn't the rationally good decision, but it was green and it had a rack and it had a light, slight lift to it and it has tires and it was pretty cheap. And it's got a hole in the front where there a headlight should be where it's not. So let's, uh, let's jump into this truck. So this is a 150 something thousand mile, eight owner Discovery One. It's a 97, so it's a four liter um, with the coil packs to the back of the motor. So that'll be fun when inevitably has a misfire. Um, and that's all I know about it. I know it came from Missouri. It kind of bounced around all over the place. It has, uh, I believe that's not a safety device. It looks like a Voyager rack on it. Um, it's got some taillight guards and some tires that are inevitably old and beat up. And it looks like it's got a little bit of a lift on it. So, some more things about the truck. It's a slick top, so there's no sunroofs, which is good for long-term interior rust, which we haven't checked yet, because this is literally the first time I'm seeing it. Um, the hood, really bad faded crack, clear coat on the paint, and that headlight fell out, and it's in the passenger seat, but we'll figure out what's going on with that later. So, so far, if you're watching this channel, I'm hoping that you're in agreement that this was something worth buying, um, because you, I, I couldn't not. So what do we got? We got green. We have got some tires, Motrin Open Country, uh, Toyos, 13 date stamps, so they're a little old. We got a step. We're missing uh, one of the turn signal indicator lights, but let's check the underneath. This might be the saving grace. This is what I believe to be a very rust-free truck. So let's let's do take a minute to check all the areas, and it appears that they are fairly very good 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 has that disco smell again cloth interior slick top good headliner it's it's amazing what not having that uh headliner does to the truck i don't even have the keys for it yes my neighbor still has them but look guys we've got floorboards oh let's go under here but look how nice and dry that is it's got cats old man emu set up this truck is nice and dry, which is an upside. Even if the motor is bad, which I don't, I haven't even started it. I, he moved it from his house to here. And that's really all I know. And he said he just moved it. He wasn't listening. So it starts, it stops, and it runs. The battery's dead, though. So that headlight's missing. Not the end of the world. I believe it still has the, yeah, it's got the connectors in there. And I found, again, a headlight from the junkyard. So I, I'm, I'm good to go. And it is an SD7, so it's a seven-seater. Check out the floorboards and whatnot here. Solid, let's look under here. 
solid. Let's look back here. Solid. So, so far, even in my opinion, even if this truck has a blown motor, for what I paid for it, a rust-free, slick top, green disco, I think I'm doing okay. So, let's jump in. The first thing I noticed, we're missing a window seal, I believe, over here. And uh, the actual lock mechanism, which is not the end of the world. I didn't test the windows. I can find that piece. Oh, and a jump box. Hopefully that's my neighbor's. Um, but manual seats, no heated seats. I've got cup holders, which is nice. These things are pretty expensive and they retail for a lot when you buy them new. Uh, mirror, again, this awesome headliner, 153,000 miles, cracking wood, obviously Oklahoma sitting. We've got a, uh, a locking LT230, missing the sticker. Um, got some other things. Uh, it's an automatic, which I like. I've got factory floor mats, which is awesome. Another thing that I wanted uh, as far as the bits for myself. And that's really, I think, all to report. Let's see if, the, uh, let's see if this tailgate works. Um, the, it, the latch is a little tough. I wonder if it's actually locked or not. I'll grab the, uh, see if I can actuate it from the inside. Nope, that's, that's busted like they, like they usually are. So rear, rear tailgate in op. I think I should be able to fix that. Never mind. I got it. So, okay. Factory floor mat back here as well. This feels good. It's not wet. I don't see any crazy rust protruding from under there. So I don't know, so far not mad about it. All right, so this just needs a good lube. It just, it, they all get rough there. Let's see, anything in here? Probably not. Oh man, I'm, I'm getting excited. All right, again, nice and honest in here, nice and dusty. Check uh, some of the stuff here. Eh, there's a little schmoo in there, but it doesn't look terminal. It smells like oil. Probably smells like there's a little gas in there too. Uh, there's oil in there. Uh, I only have one hand for this. Looks like there's some coolant in there. Probably green. Probably should top some, put some in there. And uh, let's see what the shifty box says. Yep, that looks very good as well. Valve cover gaskets, nice and honest, slight weep, but nothing crazy. Look at all those exhaust manifolds and everything. That looks great in there. Just looks really, really dusty from probably putzing around Oklahoma. Again, this thing could be totally screwed. Like said, my neighbor still has the keys. I haven't started up yet. So this is the part of the video where everything's nice and exciting. I don't have that pit of death feeling that I just bought a non-running truck. Or a truck that doesn't move. Oh boy, should we even do this? Do we even want to see that? Yep, oh, yep, that's that's crusty and dusty. I want to pop that off off camera. All right, so that's about all I can do um, without the keys. So probably gonna clean out that mass airflow sensor. I'm sure it's dirty, and let it sit here, and uh, we'll take it for a spin when uh, when my buddy gets back with the keys. But yep, new rover day. And I'll tell you what, and it just kind of hit me. One of the more stressful part about buying a new used. Land Rover is the familiarity of it. Um, kind of like when I had my uh, my LR3. Once you get another one, after you've done all the things to that first one, it just, because you know what to do, doesn't make it better. It just makes you know what to, you know what you're gonna have to do. There's no fun unknown of, maybe this will be good, maybe that'll be good. Maybe you won't need this. Because you know, deep down, it's gonna need all, all everything, all of it. And the more you know, the more you stress about. Another thing I'm noticing is this thing has been all over the place. We've got a tag from Charleston Green or Charleston. I don't know. I don't know if that's a color or not. And then uh, out up here, Oregon. So, man, who's to, who's to say this thing hasn't been all over the place? Like all Land Rovers have. There's very few that stick around with just one owner or so. And then what's going on with this? Is that broken? Weird. All right, so I've got the keys. It's always a journey with the Land Rover, and it has a clicker, so is there a way that works? All right. Keys, jump box. 
Let's do it. All right, we're hooked up. It does have an Optima yellow top, so I guess that's good. We'll see. All right. All right, let's do it. Sounds like a disco. Might have sprayed a little too much uh, mass airflow cleaner in there. But it's running. Ooh. There's some valve train noise. Let's see if that'll go away. Yeah, a little tick. That doesn't seem unhealthy. No oil light or anything, so I think it's fair to say we uh, took her for a ride. So it's got a tick. That's okay. Oil. Window works. We're we're in business, people. And a check engine light because it is a four liter. But it's idling nicely. It doesn't feel like it has a miss. But I haven't driven it yet, so we'll find out. Power steering is a little tired. These tires. These tires are probably not amazing. They feel very rough, but they are mud tires. Suspension feels nice. I don't really know what else to really test. I mean, it's brakes. I got brakes. Well, we'll watch the temp gauge because that's really the only thing that I'm concerned about here. And, uh, See if we can make it to the shop. It's funny, there's no like other car that you get in, you start it up, you just bought it, has some lifter tick or whatever that is, and you go to yourself, oh, that's fine. Let's just ignore it and just keep just driving and keep being normal. It's um, it's a, it's a disease. You, you, that's when you know you have a problem. Oh, good in the hood. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Now we're getting smells. I don't think this truck's really run in a very long time. I'm also suspecting it might not have the hood latched down all the way. So we are gonna maintain a very slow pace. But it's, it's a smooth ride. Again, the brakes feel good. It doesn't feel like it's jumping all over the place. Um, you know, there's there's some components to here that are fairly, fairly good. Shifts, you know, I'll try the, the transfer case in a, in a minute. That's a, that'll be a big one, because then it's trail trail. Before we get real serious, let me just do the, uh, the important stuff first on the disco. So, made it to the shop. Again, got some noises. I'm gonna, you know, obviously I've amassed a bunch of Land Rover parts, so let's see if we can uh, do some justice to at least maybe putting the headlight back in. I've got one of these clips. Let's see if we can rig her up a little better than she is. Also, found, found the indicator. She's just a little melty and beat up. Uh, I do know that there is one at the one cap, so I need to get a hood, and I still need to get an indicator, and I need to get some trim pieces, and that window seal, but it's all there. I should be able to find everything that I need, which is, which is, which is good. All right, so I fitted that new, these new clips don't work as well. I love how I've got a tick, but I'm like, let's get the headlights in, you know? Let's get this thing shined up, but no. These pieces, these adjustment pieces, the, the actual, the backing pieces break out. So that's probably what caused this to rattle and shake itself. Um, but I might have one in my other truck because obviously they come with bags apart. So let me see if I can find And I walked over to my green D1 and look what I had in a bag. A good one. And actually it's the same all thread length too. So we'll go ahead and chuck that in. We're halfway there, boys. And I broke that one too. So we're going <laughs> to come at this from a different angle, I guess. All right, so made it back home. Obviously, it still isn't selling that great, but I'm not in that truck. I'm in the Ford. We're gonna run to the junkyard and see if we can scavenge some of those parts off that parts truck they did the other video on, which I think is the same color green, and uh, and slap that on. Yeah, I don't. That's, is that what I should be doing with my time? And it's funny because that's actually why I bought. Another reason why I bought this truck is because I have the same truck with parts in it sitting at the junkyard. Not that it will help me with all the issues that I have at the moment, but at least for the little bits and trim pieces, I should be able to put this thing mostly whole. 
uh, for just a couple bucks and I don't have to go searching around for parts and pieces. Diesel noises. All right, back at camp. I should probably grab a wheelbarrow. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get this back up, but we'll see. And we're back. So look, green 97, I think it's the same color green. I didn't even check, but I'm not super worried. Look, got my door seal and uh, hell, maybe even a leather steering wheel. Class things up a little bit. Also should have my, yep, got my piece back there as well. So I'm gonna get busy, nothing really here worth filming. i try to get this hood without it falling on myself. And uh, yeah, go from there. So this one's dirty, but it's actually pretty good. The only thing I noticed is somebody screwed some silly emblem in there or something. So that's a bummer, but it's got the actual, the factory disco um, lettering on there. That one had the kind of the stick on one. So, you know, I got to class up my shit box, I guess. So we thank the disco gods of the junkyard. I think those are the three parts we need. I will probably be back. Cause again, this is still the only third hour that I've spent with the car. I'm sure it'll need many more things, but it's not bad for, uh, you know, getting things a little bit better than they were. So for everyone wondering, a D1 hood fits perfectly in the back of an F-250. So uh, the joys of owning bunches of cars. You need to do the grand shuffle just to get something in the driveway, but thus is life. Any more space. So I think that is probably enough shenanigans for one day. We've got the hood, important stuff. We've got the truck, throw a battery charger on it, let it sit overnight, and uh, maybe it'll fix itself by the morning. I think that's what we will do. Think about its decisions, think about its life, and then we should be good to go in the morning. Ready to go, Grandma? Do you think? So what do you think about this one? Have I seen this one before? Well, it's here now. No, it has sex wax hanging from it, so that's my first impression. <laughs> Weird. It's green. I can't tell it's dark out here, but it's got a rack. It has a rack. It's green. Does it run? I drove it here. That's good. Does that count? Score score out of ten. Um, I a six. Great. I don't know. All right, so it's the next day, and here is the junkyard hood that I pulled yesterday, and, you know, that's not bad. I'll zoom in for you. Minus that little hole and a little bit of scrubbing, that's a, that's a solid hood in comparison to what I've got on the car now. Like I said, I'm not going for looks here, but, you know, it just makes it look a little less homeless, potentially. And we've got the headlight mod, which is... Something I'm gonna have to remedy. These little pieces just keep breaking, so that's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm also trying to revitalize the battery. I don't think this is gonna work. It's not taking a charge. That's a bummer. I've got another battery that I've gotta to try to nuke to see if I can get a little bit of life out of it, because I don't wanna spend 150 bucks for a battery for this thing. If it's still making noises, I also just ordered an oil filter, and I'm probably gonna get some heavier oil um and see if that does anything you know it's a little bit of bg a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of snake oil uh might bring this back to life a little bit oh look interesting the alternator has been touching the hood because this is a this hood's been worked on I, I don't like this hood the way it's bent or something's going on here 
Um, so I would like to just kind of get it off, honestly. I'm probably going to pull it off now. That's a pretty good look. Kind of looks like the, uh, the green classic uh, Ian's truck that was here um, last week. But if you look at this hood, it's definitely, it's definitely been warped in some form or fashion. But luckily, man, it's, a, it's the same color. So we're going to, I don't know if I can do this by myself, but I'm going to try to slap that other hood on. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've never put a hood back on. This is, luckily there's no crazy shims or anything involved. You just... Literally, you just swap out the hardware. Interesting bit of uh, other stuff that's on there, too. But still, no rust. That's so cool. Engine's not amazing, but, you know, no, no rust. It's the positive things we're looking at here. All right, so she's on. Once this battery is done, me pretending like I'm gonna fix it, uh, I'll shut it and see what it looks like. But that's uh, step one complete from what my original plan was. Move on to step two. So I've got the kit of maybe this will make it work. Um, I don't think it's gonna change anything, but you know, like they say in Dumb and Dumber, so you're saying there's a chance. That's what we're operating on. Um, that doesn't really work in the automotive world, I don't think. We'll see. I don't want to hear it. Don't say anything. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. Oh, shush, shush, shush. Again. Hush. This is this is how you do it. And uh Una Mas, down the hatch. Don't take it. Don't take it. So this is again, like any successful project, just has all the, the right ingredients in it. Um, next thing you want to do is read the codes. Um, see what's going on there. Maybe it'll tell us something. Also notice that I did add coolant yesterday and it looks like it's still a little low. I don't know if it's because I ran the heat. The coolant was low to begin with, but we'll see. Some about these four liters and head gaskets and stuff like that. So, well, I'm you know observing reports. Let's let that let that circulate. I might bump the motor, fire it up, let it run for a second. Uh, again, I want to do that with the old oil, and then I'll put some more stabilizer in when I put the new heavier oil. And I'm going to go with some 1040 or something like that. Maybe that'll calm things down. Um, but but who knows? Like I said, this there's, there's no baseline for this car, and I'm doing it on a budget, so. This is what this is what happens. <sighs> a little. I think I'm pretty low on fuel too. And the jump box is dead. Wonderful. Uh, well, we're gonna let that sit. We're gonna let that sit. Um, I really would like this to take a charge. I guess I should look up how to bring a, a yellow top battery back. So I'm sure. I'm sure there's a way. starts I want to circulate that model mystery oil that do its thing
All right, welcome back to day three with the project now, Project D1. And I was I wanted to release this video sooner, but I wanted to kind of do all the things I could do before, just make it all one big video. So where I'm at with this right now, got the hood on, and I want to talk about that in a second. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what I did, because it wasn't as easy as I thought. It wasn't just a quick swap and bolts and a lot of kind of fine-tuning and adjustment to get that hood latch to really see um, and, and I'll tell you where those adjustability points are because I didn't realize when I put it All on. right, the other thing is we're doing a, a battery resurrection. Now, this has been going on for a couple days as well. I want to get this car so I can start it and drive it to the shop where I can change the oil. I've got the oil, I've got the filters, I've got the heavy oil. Again, I don't think it's going to do anything, but I want to just do it for peace of mind. Uh, this was the uh, 2011 Optima Yell Top that came with it. I nuked it with my big old battery charger from my grandfather's shop to about eight volts and then I put the maintainer on it to kind of see if we can nurse it the rest of the way there. This 2018 battery was sitting at like three or four volts. I'm nuking it now. I'm gonna try the same process. I'd like to be able to revive at least one of these two batteries because I'm doing this kind of on the cheap. Oh, another thing I noticed, these tires, man, they've got some flat spots on them, but figures can't be choosers. But let's talk about the hood. So I started off, I and mean, I was playing with the adjustability on the actual latches themselves there they can go front back side to side it's not a whole lot of adjustability that seemed pretty standard and normal what i didn't realize is you've got a lot more adjustment points this spring loaded latch it's the little pin it's got a little head on it that uh will actually clip into the um the holder down there so what i had to do is this is the new hood i had to move this whole piece loosen these loosen these bolts move it back into the left so it'll line up better with uh, this little holder piece. I had to beat it, beat this piece of metal that way and move it as far as left. I mean, there's, so I'm, you know, I'm adjusting this, I'm adjusting this, adjusting the hood. Also, it can shut and open on its own. So if you're swapping a hood, if it's not gonna fit or align on the first go, you do have to mess with those adjustment points. Um, it's just kind of an FYI. So I started off, I was playing with the adjustability on the actual latches themselves there they can go front back side to side it's not a whole lot of adjustability that seemed pretty standard and normal what i didn't realize is you've got a lot more adjustment points this spring loaded latch it's the little pin it's got a little head on it that uh will actually clip into the um the holder down there so what i had to do is this is the new hood i had to move this whole piece loosen these loosen these bolts move it back into the left so it'll line up better with uh, this little holder piece. I had to beat it, beat this piece of metal that way and move it as far as left. I mean, there's, so I'm, you know, I'm adjusting this, I'm adjusting this, adjusting the hood. Also, it can shut and open on its own. So if you're swapping a hood, if it's not gonna fit or align on the first go, you do have to mess with those adjustment points. Um, it's just kind of an FYI. All right, so I also want to, I forgot, I gotta check the codes on this thing. Yeah. Turn it off. It's funny. You got a, a nice little knock, and you're like, "Oh, let me check the codes. Maybe I can just erase it." It's like a no shit Sherlock. So let's see what it says. Oh, enhanced. Back in time. Oh, cylinder eight misfire. That's it. Wasn't what I was expecting. And a 1316. I feel like I know that, but we'll look that up. All right, so battery update. This uh, this black Everstar is actually taking a charge sitting around 10, 11 volts. So that might be done by the end of the day. In the meantime, while waiting for that to kick off, let's uh, get in here real quick and vacuum clean this thing out because it's, it's pretty dirty. I'm not going to go crazy on it, but, uh, you know, look at that. I mean, the paint, it's, you know, it's... There's some life left in this thing, and let's uh, just want to capture it a little bit better. So that's a little more livable. Obviously the seat's not great, but the interior cleaned up, so I'm into it.
All right, so we're gonna change the oil. I didn't wanna wait, I'm just gonna do it. It's not gonna fix anything, but put some goo in it, some more goo since it's already full of goo. Get the old goo out, put the new goo in, and then check out the underside. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Now there's no good way to do these three, nine, four liter oil pans without it just getting everywhere. It's a pain. All right, so first glance, not full of metal or anything. So that's just dripping under there and the rest of it's coming out. So it's a good sign. All right, so we're all waiting for that to finish up. We'll jump in and check out the rest of the underside. Got a little dampness around TKs. This is impressive. Yeah, that's from, I doubt that's from actually off-roading. I think that's probably from some picking the wrong jack point. That would be fun to bend out, but you know, not, it's not rusty I mean, a little bit, but nothing bad. Yeah. Uh, it's in the email. Oh, all right, so the Mondial sold. That was that was all about. But yeah, everything is in order. No uh, arches look good. like it's it's not perfect, guys. I'm talking about I'm talking about a disco here. So I like what I see. This truck is worth hanging on to. And I apologize, but my hands are all oily and I'm not really uh, operating the cameras. Well, as I could be, but that is okay. Like I said, body mounts, everything for an old disco. Pretty, pretty good. All right, Lucas and treatments, what for breakfast? We went heavy, heavy bike on the oil here and uh, we'll see if that made any difference. There's no way that this has done anything. I've probably just made the problem worse, but gotta try. All right, if it'll even start, give it a little bump first. She's there. I got an oil light and it's gone. Should probably check the level, but. We, uh, we didn't solve the world's problems, kids. And so, in all its glory, I think that's gonna wrap up the saga, uh, at least for this part of the, uh, the sight unseen rolled dice auction disco. Wonderful. I think the car's gonna stick around for a little while. I wanna take that rack and put it on my other one and have something to play with for a little while. That's kind of the idea of a project like this. Maybe pull a valve cover, see what's going on. But it's good to have something to play with. I think, yeah, I overpaid for it. Yeah, it's broken, but that's, that's the name of this game. In conclusion, I got nothing else, that's it. Okay, I'm going inside. We gotta, this'll be a problem for another day. Oh, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff. Check out the rest of my channel. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos, coming to 900 videos, almost 8,000 subscribers. So please hit that, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, hit the bell. It really helps. Thanks.